Now, until the last section, we were using entity manager dot find for finding or retrieving records from the database. From now on, we will use Java persistence query language. Now, JPQL is built on the similar lines of SQL but the main difference is we will be querying the entities we won't be querying the database directly we will be querying the entities we have created so for testing out the queries let's now regenerate the entities so entity class from database and select all of them and then deselect this ones we have so add them next just uncheck this list ok finish ok now let's check this entities now as such as I mentioned before some names are not according to what we want them to be so let's change them let's change this category to category ID to category and let's delete this and you can regenerate the getters and setters later on or let's regenerate it now let's name this let me refactor it again food items now it's giving me some warning let's see the warning later on let me go to this table I guess the warning was related to this it wasn't able to change this now nothing left in this table to change and food item now in next table cage cage is an animal not animal id refactor let's remove this animal ID let's regenerate the getters and setters okay that's it for this table so so on and so forth for all the tables so let, let's just change one more let's in category entity we should have animals instead of animal list so refactor rename animals factor now let's start with our first jpql query so the query is created using the same entity manager object entity manager dot create query we are going to create a normal string query and then we are going to write this query over here later on so let's just assign the query first of all query is equal to this okay and let's write the query right now select a from animal a so basically this is your basic jpql query so if it was sql you would have written something like this right okay another difference between sql and jpql is in sql this alias or this identification variable was optional but in jpql it's compulsory you have to mention the identification variable now let's run this query or rather let's get the result from this query query dot get result list and let's assign it to a list and let's create this variable okay so we know that this is going to be a list of animals so if you're sure that the output is going to be some entity we can mention the entity over here animal dot class and instead of query now we can use typed query okay now the answer will be list of animals instead of a untyped list okay now let's just output those animals for we'll use for each loop for animal a 
belonging to list let's print those animals let's print some attributes like a dot sorry animal and let's print a dot get type and let's print one more attribute maybe the total number dot get total number okay now let's run this query let's save and run the query and here is the output as you can see over here it's grayed out let me just show it clearly I can print it to the error stream I guess let's save it let's run it once again if you see the workbench select these are the these are the animals right now and now you can see them in red because I printed it to the error stream now let's use a VAC loss to filter some of the records instead of returning all the animals let's return only a few animals no so select A from animal A where A dot and you get intelligence over here too A dot total number is greater than 3 okay so we are selecting all the animals whose total number is greater than 3 so right now 3 animals have total number greater than 3 so let's save and run the query let's clear this off and here's the output there are three records containing total number greater than three now instead of hard coding three over here it's better that the user inputs the number so instead of three let's mention a parameter we'll use the parameterized query so instead of three I mention colon followed by some word so it's the query is now this okay and before we run the query we have to assign value to that num so query dot set parameter num and let's send the value 3 over here okay now let's run it again clear save and run and here again we get the same output now instead of named parameter let's use positional parameter we have two facilities to enter parameters in JPQL either you can use name parameter or positional parameter so let's replace this num with a number and this colon with a question mark so the general format is for named parameter it is colon followed by word and for positional parameters it's question mark followed by some number so instead of num now we'll mention the position one let's save and run it again let's clear this first and run and we have the same output again now let's say instead of returning the entire entity we just want to return some fields of this entity so let's first delete this off and let's say we want to return just a dot say it's type and maybe the total number okay now the result won't be a an animal right it's going to be something else and we will be using again the generic query over here and then let's remove this parameter okay and then gain a non type list so here I have shown the difference when a uh, entity is returned against when just few fields of an entity are returned over here as we have seen before it returns a list of entities and over here when we are just returning few of the fields it returns a list of object array so it's every item is an object array now instead of entities now each object will be object array so let's go to our application and over here the returned object I first cast it to an object array 
now since it's an object array let's array the zeroth value will be the type and my array the first value will be the total number okay now let's save and run the application and here's the output so what we have done till now is writing just a query over here we pass the query to the create query method so instead of this a better idea is writing the query in a named query annotation so let's just add a new query it will be a named query and let's name it something later on and let's mention the query okay and usually if the query is related to this class it's always always prefixed with the name of that entity so we'll just create a simple query and let's define the query from animal a okay and then go back to this class and instead of create query we'll use this method create named query okay and the query name is we get intelligence for that too simple okay again we can also mention the class it's written animal dot class and make it a typed query and making the return type also typed over here okay now this will be animal over here and let's print something over the animal get type and object dot get total number save and run the query now the query is defined over here instead of over here now mentioning the query in the named query annotation gives the provider an opportunity to pre-process the query and your query execution time can be reduced so in one of the previous examples we had just returned few fields from the entity the thing was it returned us a rather awkward kind of list of object array something like this it returned us a list of an array of objects so instead of this won't it be a good idea if it returned us a list of some objects so for that I can I created one object it's named animal info and I have mentioned just two fields in it type and type number which correspond to the types we want to have as the return type now we have to call this constructor the constructor has type and total number as its parameters so let's call that constructor over here but you have to mention the fully qualified name of the class so let's do some copy pasting dot animal info and let's call that constructor now this is the this is the complete fully qualified name with the parameters for the constructor and this time we will be returning animal info and this time it will be a typed query so let's delete this and local variable let's delete this and create the local variable and then the object will be animal info okay and let's delete this object dot get type object dot get total number save and run 